The Rings of Power, episode 8. What a shit show. How have we come to this? They have a Tolkien lore master on set. What the fuck are they doing? This show is abysmal. We have Durin's plot. Little Durin's had enough of King Durin and he wants to take the ring off him forcefully. He even tells Dissa, don't come down no matter what you hear. Does she listen? Does she fuck? And so Little Durin confronts King Durin and as he walks in, you see King Durin fucking using a battering ram to mine for Mithril. Why not use a pickaxe? We've seen you use a pickaxe and be very successful with it and the shot looks clumsy as hell. Little Durin arrives and he's like, I'm gonna cut your finger off to get the ring. The dad's like, fuck off. And then Durin's like, do you remember when we used to arm wrestle and you used to nearly let me win? And King Durin's like, no, you are weak. And then breaks through the wall. And then lo and behold, we see the Mithril, the lightning bolts, the good and evil. And they are both looking at it. They're loving it. And then we have the Balrog appear. You know the Balrog that isn't meant to appear until the third age, until during the sixth? Nah, fuck it. It's during the third time. It's his Durin's Bane. And lo and behold, they rip off the shot where the whip wraps around the king's legs and drags him. Doesn't drag him all the way down, just drags him a little bit. You have a shot where little Durin gets flown into the air and he bangs his head. And then all of a sudden, with all this chaos going on, the Balrog's trying to fucking climb up the wall. And you have a shot where it goes all silent apart from King Durin. And he's not even shouting. He's like, talking at a whisper and little Durin can hear him as clear as daylight we have the most pointless death going amazon forgot that dwarves can't jump well king Durin, instead of running away he goes and jumps at the balrog he jumps a good distance he's not going to reach the balrog and the balrog swipes at him with his sword his axe looks like it blocks it and then boom we assume that he's dead but you never know with the fucking amazon rings of power and there you have it king Durin is dead yep What a character. He's probably one of the actors I actually liked in the show. They have just chucked all the lore. They go, hmm, Durin's Bane? Why not let this be Durin the Third's Bane? Absolutely ridiculous. And what did it prove? Nothing. Because later on, they don't even bring up the Balrog. Not one mention they talk about the succession of king durin but they don't talk about what they're gonna do with the balrog brilliant well done thank you amazon thank you and there you have it next season's plot is probably going to be little durin's struggle for succession amazing can't wait to see what they do with him they pitched this episode as being another battle episode was it fuck we have a stupid shot where the orcs have already taken over the city and you have them still firing catapults into the city what is this by adar's orders the guy who loves his orcs they are his children yet he's doing friendly fire on them what and we have this long shot you know we see an elf kick the bucket and then we cut to galadriel oh god look at this for a scene she kills a load of orcs well i say killed i think they do it to themselves just look at the first one he walks into the blade and the other one just doesn't swing he just stands there the choreography is abysmal in this show by the way absolute dross and so galadriel leads these alvin women and alvin girls very diverse bunch out of the city via the secret tunnel why didn't calabrimbor suggest this to any of the other elves seems though he built the city fuck knows but galadriel's on her merry way and as they leave the tunnel they are ambushed by a group of orcs very kind orcs because these orcs listen to demands they are threatening to kill galadriel and the other elves and what does galadriel do she offers up the nine rings does she forget that calabrimbor is literally sacrificing himself so that she can get rid of these rings not give them away you fucking idiot this plan could have gone so wrong the orcs have the leverage they could literally just go okay you've got the rings i'll kill you now and then that's it 
done? Why is she bargaining them? And how do the orcs know about the nine rings? I think they only know about the three, not nine. They've only just been made, but hey ho, they believe it. And they also let the other elves go, because you know, orcs are really good at following the Geneva Code. And there you have it. Galadriel goes to Adar. Brilliant. And we predicted this on the Hobbit Fan Editor's channel. Please go check it out. That as a laugh, we predicted that the ring would probably heal Adar. Well, he's fucking healed straight away. Adar's got a new look. He's beaming. And I can't tell if Galadriel's thirsty or not, but she looks like she wants some. Adar's like, oh, we could use these rings to heal the orcs. And then he takes off the ring and then he's back to normal. Yeah, brilliant. The ring's fucking amazing. And so Galadriel seems like she's on board with this plan to team up together to save the orcs. Because remember, the orcs just want a new home. They just want to live and be happy fathers. Look at all those fathers attacking Eregion. Then the pacifist orc comes over on a stretcher with other orcs and we get some poetic justice as Adar is comforting said orc. They go and do a Julius Caesar on him. They literally rip off the opening of this season. They are so creative. Can you see it's a full circle? And Adar dies and you meant to feel sorry for him you meant to think oh what a pity he was just a good guy well his actions are fucking speaking louder than his words just look what he did to the prisoners he got waldrig to kill a couple of them and this is meant to be your morally gray character no he isn't he's fucking awful good riddance we'll come back to gladwell in a bit whilst all that is happening calabrimbor is being tortured he's being peppered with arrows and i can't help but think and look at the artwork which is really amazing you see calabrimbor on a pole full of arrows and it looks very very haunting and then you get this shit that looks like it's straight out of ace ventura look at this the arrows are clearly under his arm they put it as close to his arms as possible and he's just whining he's just defying Sauron but not in a very interesting way they're just talking and Sauron's like trying to tease him even saying that he can keep him alive in a torturous way why doesn't he Calabrimbo has what you want keep him alive don't let him die he wants the rings and Calabrimbo knows where they are but hey ho Sauron is so emotional after a few teasing sessions from Calabrimbo Sauron goes and kills him with the spear absolutely brilliant this bromance this relationship that we've had between these two i've seen people crying at the death of calabrimbo how could you cry at this what have we got from the two the showrunners have also stated that there was a bit of sexual tension between the two what the fuck and calabrimbo says you are the lord of the rings and somehow, by killing Calabrimbo, Sauron is very, very upset. Why? They had such a bromance, remember? And you even have this orc come in, and he's like, Are you Sauron? And Sauron's crying through his words. He's like, I go by many names. Why are you trying to paint Sauron as this? The Dark Lord, not this. As Adar is dying, Sauron steps out. Calabrimbo's sacrifice has been for nothing. <sighs> and so he starts to talk to Galadriel, saying, Oh, you should have joined me. I would have put a crown on your head. I think we are meant to think that he actually did care about Galadriel. He wanted Galadriel as a partner. What? I just think of that Gandalf quote, and he does not share power. Well, he wants to. He wants a girl. He's hungry for some V. And my first question when I saw this, because they start fighting, is Sauron has already mind-controlled elves in the last episode to kill themselves, because he already influenced them. He had control over their minds. He's already been in Galadriel's mind he fucks with her during this scene but no apparently Sauron can turn off and on his powers whenever he chooses and this is one of those moments 
because he doesn't do that. He doesn't use the force like what he did to Myrdania. He doesn't use any of his powers. His motivation during this scene is to get the ring and he shows no effort of trying to get said ring he should be battering gladrill but they are keeping up with each other he scores a few hits on her she scores a few hits on him brilliant and all the while they are talking to each other building up this fucking twilight romantic shite sauron even says at one point gladrill surely you of all elves must understand that to find the light, we must first touch the darkness. It is another shit call back from season one. And so they keep on fighting. At one point, Sauron turns into Halbrand again to really play with Galadriel's mind. But he looks like Arthur Fleck and they have a fight scene. And then he turns into Galadriel, another dark lord. Do you know Morgul Blades? Well, apparently Morgoth's crown is a Morgul Blade because he stabs Galadriel with it pretty badly as well and she then takes off the ring she's going to give Sauron the ring and so Galadriel chucks herself off a cliff not just a little cliff look at this you can't tell me her ring, Nenya, is going to protect her from falling off a cliff. She has no bruises. She's not even banged her head. Her head isn't even cracked. She's okay. She's fine. She's been stabbed with a blade. She's been cut up badly and now she's fallen off a cliff but i'm sure she'll be fine and why doesn't sauron force hold her we've seen him do it to Merdania. why doesn't he do it to galadriel no idea so then a load of orcs go to sauron and he kills the daddy orc i just picture a scene from like saving private ryan where you've got an orc that's got to drive to his wife to say i'm sorry your husband fell in battle and so Sauron is in charge of the orcs back with Alrond he's been captured with Gilgalad they are brought down to their knees and these orcs are going to be burning the scrolls and Alrond's like no don't do that it's Calabrimbor's works of art it will be lost in history don't do that because you know when you say to an orc don't do this. They are going to do it even more. But hold on. There's a certain character that's there that everyone said had died. There was video saying Adar kills said character. And lo and behold, Arundir is alive. What the fuck? How the hell is he alive? He got stabbed twice. Do they ever explain how he's healed straight away? Do they fuck? They are just like, yep, yeah, he's okay. No reference to it whatsoever. He's all good. And so as they're captured, Gilgalad says the funniest line going. He goes, dwarfs. And then a load of dwarfs attack. Narvi is leading the charge. Timelines are all fucked. How long has this taken? I don't think Amazon knows. They just don't care. They chuck everything. And so the dwarfs somehow have got into the city it looks like they are winning the battle but apparently they lost and so it ends on them all moving out of the city and that's when we see alrond gilgalad and arandir for some fucking reason stand over galadriel and gilgalad tries to heal her he tries to draw the poison out of galadriel because you know blunt force trauma isn't a thing alron's story arc for the season is completed he grabs nenya and then uses it on galadriel and she is healed alrond fully trusts these rings now and so galadriel is saved and we end their story with them all talking together they are in a hidden place a safe haven please don't let this be rivendell i beg you and so we have the power shot of gladual gilgalad arandir for some reason and alrond all together and they are going to be teaming up to defend against sauron there you have it for them.
absolutely awful. They have butchered the siege of Eregion. But hey-ho, we've got Elendil's plot. Elendil's daughter, which I still forget her name. She's in charge. The faithful have been rounded up and they are told that Sauron manipulated the trial by Big Fish and so all of the faithful are arrested and so all of this the Valar shall decide your fate in the last episode has all gone to shit it was all for nothing because lo and behold that plot has been reversed and they are after Elendil and Elendil's daughter Aarian I think her name is goes to Elendil and says you need to hide yourself you need to go never does Elendil go come with me daughter we need to get you away from here no he just leaves her And she doesn't want to go with him. Like, she can see that they are evil. But no, she just stays. They're trying to paint her as being a victim. Well, go with your father. It's that simple. But no, she tells some gods to leave the house alone because no one's in there. And then Elendil has gone. Brilliant. What a great father. And then he ends up with Muriel. You know Muriel, the one who's meant to be teaching him how to become a leader? Well, the show are really shipping Muriel and Elendil. There's a lot of tension between the two. Elendil's like, oh, I won't leave without you. You are coming with me. And Muriel's like, I can't see for shit. No, I'm staying here. And like the blind leader she's always been, she stays, but not before giving Elendil Narsil. Oh, God. It is shot for shot the same like the scene in The Return of the King. That's how they wanted to do it, and it is awful. This in a better show would have been a great moment, but it's in Amazon's Rings of Power, and it is not earned. And so Elendil only got the sword because Muriel gave it to him. Brilliant. And that's it for Elendil. He goes away. He does name drop his son, Anarion. We will be seeing him in the next season, if they have a next season. And he is going to the West, where there are more faithful. And let's get a sealed door story over and done with. Estrid's a whore. She wants a sealed door. She abandons her husband she cheats on him yet he's the bad guy she was willing to leave a sealed door kill him if need be so that she could go back to her husband but nah she wants a sealed door now and so we big up their relationship apparently as well a sealed door is a father figure to Theo who's lord of Palagir apparently as they are rejoicing in their relationship Kermit arrives and says they are setting up a watchtower here in Palagia and he's shocked when he sees a sealed door. I completely forgot that they apparently were so close in the last season. A sealed door did cover Kermit's back when he blew up the ships. I don't know why, but he did. Kermit says that Elendil is being tried for treason and they're trying to capture him. It ends with Isildur going away on a boat. Estrid's back with her husband. Brilliant. What has Isildur's role been during this season? He's one of the biggest characters going. He's had nothing to do. Alas, we come to probably the most pointless characters and scenes during the show. Grandalf. And Saruman finally meet up. Apparently, we missed the scene that happened between this and the last time we saw the Harfoots. There was meant to be a big battle between the Tuscan Raiders and the Stores. But no, that that happened off screen. And so we end up with Gandalf walking through the Stores' gaff. And Saruman's like, 
Oh, I've been waiting ages for you. I knew you'd come. Manwe promised that you'd come. And I'm here to teach you, to guide you, to fight against Sauron. And then the Tusken Raiders bring out Poppy and Nori with blades to their neck. And the leader says, we come here for our payment. Give it to us now and give it to us raw. And Saruman's like, no, go away and throws him and he dies. And the Raiders, instead of killing Nori and Poppy, or taking them as sausages they just let them go they don't kill him they just run off was this a trap by saruman was this to make saruman look good i don't know i mean later on i think it's tom bombadil's got a hand in it apparently but saruman says come and join me and nori and poppy are angry apparently at saruman for killing that tuscan raider despite the fact that said tuscan raider was going to kill you what it's an absolute joke and so gandalf doesn't want to go with saruman and saruman then kicks up a fuss he breaks a load of rocks which kill a couple of stores they literally look up They can see it from a mile away, but no, they just stand there and let the rocks fall on them. And Saruman's like, come to me at my place and we can discuss this further. And then he leaves. But Gandalf does a Rey Skywalker and stops the rocks from falling. There was a comment from a live stream that I was on from Anon that says, why the hell does Gandalf need a staff when he can already do this? I 100% agree. Why the fuck does he need it? Look at his power levels. Absolutely amazing. And why the hell does Saruman, he's wanted Gandalf. He was willing to get him by force. He wants Gandalf so badly. But no, he ends up leaving him when he has the chance to capture him why they don't explain it he just wanders off he goes home and expects gandalf to follow him i don't fucking get this what has been the point of this storyline has his story purely been to get his staff and to get his name what we didn't need saruman during this season why what has he added to the season he's added nothing what a waste of a great actor the harfoot storyline conclude with nori saying that she's going to be leading poppy and the stores away and they are going to be setting up a home they are going to be founding the shire fucking amazing that's going to be their storyline for season three. Oh god we're nearly there as they are all leaving they are all saying goodbye grand elf everyone's saying this apparently they all think that he's an elf despite not knowing what a elf looks like he looks more like a man than an elf but hey ho and so we get the stranger's name reveal he puts two and two together somehow he goes grand elf grand elf gandalf is this fucking hodor unironically hodor had a better origin for his name what if the stores were calling him dickhead what would he call himself then like honestly it is absolutely shite and we've spent one whole season trying to find out what his name is when we already knew what his name was at the end of last season why have we wasted so much time on this and yeah he just finds his staff on the ground and that's it he's got his staff he's got his name and he goes back to tom bombadil and tom bombadil apparently set this as a task apparently tom bombadil so involved you remember him in the fellowship of the ring he was really involved then tom bombadil so hellbent on fighting sauron then why doesn't he get more involved i'll tell you why because he fucked it up in the rings of power absolutely dross and so tom bombadil says you passed your task that's it you're done and they start singing why i don't know just more callbacks i guess and gandalf knows the lyrics they've got a karaoke machine on the go and that ends their storyline the rings of power season two was an absolute disaster what a shit show and i don't know what they're going to be doing with season three this season was a nightmare and i'm glad it's over it's done